recently, as I always discover on the internet, there's always something about perspective, about the way that you look at things, the way that you adapt to things. Sometimes it's what you see, sometimes it's what you hear, sometimes it's the way you interact with life. You know, the things that affect you in some way. You know, when the cold comes, like it's cold this morning, you put on an extra layer of coats, you know, or clothes because brr, it's cold. And in life, a lot of things affect you in ways that you need to do something about. For instance, fire, you need to stay away from. Smoke, you need to be careful of. It could knock you out. You need to be careful about how you treat your body because it's subject to chills, the flu, the colds, the seasons. It's subject to being shot. It could be torn up by mountain lions. It could be attacked by bugs and things that we can't see. But you know, people will treat that as being, well, of course, that's common sense. Everybody knows that. You don't want to take a hammer and smash your hand. That's stupid. Well, the same thing is true about your soul and your spirit. You see, most Christians know that they need to read the Bible because they want to feed their spirit. They've got to read the Word, so they're always getting into the Word of God to feed their soul, or actually to feed their spirit, to build up that inner spiritual man, because that's what we're told. But there's an interesting thing that we're not told much about, because we all like to indulge a little bit in it, and that's our soul. You know, soul food. You know, you've heard that expression, soul food. Well, most of us, if you're like me, grew up in a very rock and roll generation or some type of musical background that you enjoy the type of music you have. But one of the things that we didn't really pay much attention to was how much the music affected our soul. We're told that music calms the savage beast and to some degree that's a certain amount of truth to it, but not all music. We're told that there's a certain kind of hard rock that was used on Noriega when he was hiding in his you know, little enclave that they broadcasted so loud and so constant 24-7 that it drove him kind of crazy and he, he was able to surrender eventually down in Nicaragua or Panama, I'm not sure which. But music has an effect on us. Music affects our soul. It has that ability to change and rearrange our emotions. As a matter of fact, we know what love songs are, don't we? We know how we feel about our soul music. Soul music, you know, the kind that takes you there, that brings you there, that makes you feel a certain way, that hypes you up and brings you down, that turns you around. Well, if we know that that kind of effect has on our soul, what are we doing with worldly music? What are we doing with secular music, if we're any kind of Christian at all? Now, I understand a baby Christian not being able to give up the world and its ways until it's done sucking its bottle, you know, it can actually make a decision to choose not to be a part of the world. But I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I had to put away my idols. I had to get rid of all my secular music. I had to get rid of all that junk in my trunk because it was weighing me down. It was causing me not to hear the Lord because I was too much caught up in my feelings, nothing more than feelings, and it was making me turn into some kind of like roller coaster ride when it came to God and the Word of God. I couldn't seem to keep it together. I was always one foot in the world and one foot in the heavens, and I couldn't seem to get my feet properly under me or on the ground of my righteousness. So I found I had to put away my idols. I had to put away all that secular stuff because it was pointing me in the wrong direction. Now I find on the internet interesting that people who know better have gotten back into it. They've decided to participate in feeding their soul because they're emotional now. They want to oh, remember when and they look back on those days of feeding their soul. And it's interesting because it's not about their spirit and it's not about God when they're talking about using this secular music. Until recently, it was pretty shocking for me all of a sudden to discover that people were starting to use non-Christian music attached to devotionals 
to promote God as though somehow the secular music was pointing in the right direction. And you listen to the lyrics and you go, are you kidding me? What are you doing mixing darkness with light? What are you doing putting in feelings where God says faith is the fact of what your feelings will become if you choose to operate according to the Spirit when I will give you peace. I will give you love. I will give you joy. But I have to warn you, your flesh will war against that because your flesh doesn't want peace. It wants violence. Your flesh doesn't want joy. It wants satisfaction. You know, I can't get no satisfaction. Because satisfaction is about getting what you want when you want it because you want it, not because of denying yourself. But you could have peace instead. But which do you want? Satisfaction or peace? that passes all understanding. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is of the tree of righteousness that you are becoming, unless you're making the tree evil. And Jesus said, either make the tree good or make the tree evil. Which will you be? So, I'm finding now in this perspective of the internet and the information age, a lot of people going off on a tangent and starting to blend in with the world again. You know, putting in secular music like, you know, <laughs> My sweet Lord Hare Krishna, Lord Lord Hare Krishna, you know, all that kind of secular music and rock and roll, instead of the Christian rock that I remember was so anointed and appointed by God and that it inspired us to, we in the Jesus movement, cause the world to be born again. Or at least to say the words born again, because they weren't using the words before. The Jesus movement was a massive movement in the world. But it also was a great movement in music because we took back what the devil had stolen, literally, and that was our soul. We turned our soul towards God by the words that we used because they were Christian. Not Christian thoughts or Christian testimony, but the word of God put to music. And so I'm not approved by saying there's a certain kind of Christian music you got to have. Shoot, there's rap, Christian rap, and I've done some rap and jap and tap and, you know, done all those kind of things, you know. I've also done some Mozart, you know, I've also done some classics, you know. I mean, hey, I've done it with Christian music. But you know what I don't do? Is I don't compromise one for the other. I don't say secular music is worthy to be put in with the Word of God. And I don't say that you should put the Word of God inside of secular music. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Because what fellowship has light with darkness? None. Because they will war against each other. So when people are now putting these devotionals together or these teachings together and then slapping in some famous Christian, anti-Christian artist, I'm shocked. I'm flat amazed. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Where did you come grow up? What are you trying to do? Build up your soul, you know, so that you can war with your flesh, you know, and overcome your spirit? Are you trying to compromise and be, you know, one foot in heaven and one foot in hell? together? What are you doing? Carrying yourself apart? And you can't figure out why you're being provoked easily? God forbid that we should turn back to idols we put away. The younger generation looks at the older generation for some light and whether or not they'll live up to what they said they were doing. And if you're choosing to participate in Oh, the good old memories. Remember when the Beatles or whatever song group that you are into, Jackson or Beatles or anybody, it doesn't matter who it is, if they're secular, they're not for you. They're all about sensual soul music and making you feel good, you know, or feel bad, or feel sad, or feel in love. And that's not the kind of love that God was talking about. You see, when you're inspired, God conspires in your heart to use the Word of God to be personified in some way of an expression of music to Himself that is reflected through the person creating that music link that is going on in heaven. That God creates it so that your spirit would be magnified and that it would overcome the flesh of your soul and your your to overcome the flesh of your soul. Overcome your flesh and your soul so that you would turn to your spirit and be lifted up into the heavenly so that you would see things that you've never seen before. Hear things you've never heard. 
I'm amazed that so easily, like the Galatians were so caught up that having been made perfect in grace, now they were turning back to legalism. The amazing thing to me now is having been made perfect in the spirit, you want to turn to the flesh in order to you know, revive it so that you can feel something because you're dissatisfied in some way with your own growth and maturity that you've gone back to the world. Turn again. Look at what you're doing. Realize you're being a hypocrite and you're compromising with the Word of God. It's not godly to take that which is ungodly and mix it together and present it to the people and then say, oh, well, <laughs> works for me, so it must be good for you too. I'm sorry. It doesn't work for God. Period. Because you don't mix Belial with Jehovah. You don't mix the gods of Mordok and Morlock and all the other ones with Jesus. You just don't. It's a false theology. It's a false compromise. It's taking rot and mixing it in with right. And I'm sorry, but you know what? When I bite into an apple, I don't want to taste anything rotten in it. And that's what secular music does. It will rot your soul eventually. Because it goes in like a cancer and it feeds your feelings until they overcome your spirit. And you may think that you can handle it, but I'm telling you straight up, you won't. You will stumble and fumble and fall immediately, quickly, on the altar of satisfaction that you derive from feeding your soul something that your God never intended for your spirit to have. You see, God wants to bring you home to Him where your spirit, your soul, and your new flesh would be made one in Him and complete. But if you're adding to yourself burdens and weighing yourself down in the world, when Jesus returns, will He take you with Him? Or will He look at you in disgust and not want to have anything to do with you? Because you've added to your righteousness so much unrighteousness that He doesn't see any good in you anymore. Do not compromise with the world. Choose to be in the world but not of the world. Because as you've added these things from the world, you are becoming of the world. And the world recognizes very quickly how easy it is to get you involved with it and not with the kingdom of God.